And all right, welcome everybody to today's exciting podcast all about about the very important shipwreck of the Bonham Richard, the Bonham Richard, the Bonnie Dick, whatever you wish to call her, she will remain one of the most important shipwrecks in maritime history. And the story, at least for me, began in around 2015 when Timothy Akers and the great lads and the great team at Merlin Burrows first introduced me to the concept of this shipwreck having been uh, the ru- being the ruins of one of the most famous battles in maritime history off the coast of Flamborough Head in Filey, England in the North Sea when John Paul Jones, highly considered to be the first admiral of the U.S. Navy, took a French a war vessel, a galleon, into English waters, a very gallant, brave maneuver, and got into a battle with the Serapis, an English uh, vessel, these guys which immediately, with a, uh, a tremendous cannon uh, fire, blew off the top two decks of the ship, right. causing it to catch fire to and immediately in started to burn. Water. And at that point, John Paul Jones uh, carried off one of the most the incredible ship. maneuvers they in maritime history, in pulling this ship around alongside the Serapis and commandeering along with his men the Serapis uh, and uh, uttering the famous last words, which were, I have not yet begun to fight. <laughs> So after many, many ship, uh, many dives at this shipwreck, uh, I'm now going to introduce our two members today. We have John Hart, uh, Director of Operations at Merlin Burrows, and Bruce Blackburn, CEO of Merlin Burrows, my longtime friends and colleagues in this exciting project. So please welcome John Hart, and Bruce Blackburn. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How are you today? Yeah, all good. Very well. Pleased to be on board. Fantastic to have you here. We began this adventure quite a long time ago uh, when it was Tim uh, Timothy Akers who first uh, started to scan the area and detected what he believed were the ruins of this shipwreck. Tell us a little and bit. And at that time, I didn't have a gray hair on my head. <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> and actually, Bruce had some hair at that time. <laughs> that was an even longer time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so in 2015, uh, because the location of the shipwreck is so complicated, it's uh, first of all, the North Sea is not an easy place to dive. And secondly, um, it is uh, the, the actual location of the site makes it complicated. So... When we first went out there, uh, that was Chris and I got into the water. It was freezing cold. But we started to right away uh, recover handfuls of, of pieces of wood that looked to be from the right uh, wreck. And, of course, we've gone back since with Tim Yarrow and Rich Keys on many, many occasions, always recovering more artifacts. Um, so my question is... Since we've been diving, and with all the dives and uh, ex- uh, uh, expeditions we've we've uh, done on site there, what can you say about the recovered items? Well, the one thing. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. All right. So um, I, I seem to disappear. Um, <laughs> the 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 one thing that's most interesting is that the majority of the timbers have got signs of burning. Now, unless there was a, a big bonfire on the beach and then he then threw the wood into the sea, it's difficult to imagine how the wood got burnt whilst in the sea. So the only fire that we know that was there was from the battle in 1779. So any timbers that are burnt, one could assume that they are from the battle and from the Bonhomme Richard. That makes sense, especially I think uh, in that one spot, there's only really been a couple of shipwrecks recorded, and this one was the only one which was on fire, if I'm correct. Correct. So the other ship that's notable in that area, um, nearly everything was recovered from the ship. Um, It it was a wreck, but it was a beached wreck, and um, they spent days 
getting everything off it. Correct, correct. When uh, when was this uh, Bruce first re uh, registered there with the uh, uh, the register of, of Rex, the receiver of Rex? Yeah, initially, um, once we once we were confident that we'd actually found um, the Bonham Richard, the Rex site of the Bonham Richard, we actually made a, a direct approach to the U.S. Navy um, and drew the matter to their attention. Uh, we wrote to them, I wrote to them, and um, expressed that, you know, we would be interested if they were, if they wanted to get involved with us as a collaborator or take Merlin Burroughs on as simply as a subcontracted service for actually locating the wreck site and then effectively handing over the coordinates and everything to do with it to them, for them to take the lead. After all, it was... An American under an American flag. Um, it was their first ever notable uh, warship that was uh, circumnavigating the coast of the UK during the War of Independence. Um, and astonishingly, we received zero uh, response. And in fact, we wrote to three different individuals because we thought well maybe we just knocked on the wrong door mm. and eventually um, because there was no response and then some rather strange uh, activity started to emerge in the area we became increasingly nervous about that and decided that we would take the on the, on, in the absence of any response and having given them an opportunity which spans up it's months, not weeks or days, it's span months because we hadn't received anything back from them. We decided that we had to protect uh, the wreck um, and also our interests in finding the wreck. And uh, we made our, we, we filled out all of the required paperwork to register our find with the receiver of wreck. And not only uh, did we provide the location and the um, uh, the basis upon and body of evidence upon which we'd uh, ma made the discovery and were, at, you know, ascertaining that this was the wreck. We also provided a full inventory of uh, and catalogued items that we'd recovered. Um, and also we catalogued and listed items that we'd seen in the water, but that we weren't able to recover, uh, which was, you know, in excess of 100 elements. Hmm. Um, and I think that um, every time we, we nearly every time we actually yet did execute a dive, we came away with something, some ship's timbers. And as, as John said earlier, you know, I think 800 plus wrecks have been recorded in, the, in, the, in that coastline over the years. And there was only ever one ship that was on fire when it went down Correct. or sank or perished. And that was the, the Bonham Richard. It's uh, curious when you consider, uh, I think that if I remember correctly, you told me that uh, that other teams, namely Nat Geo and some other U.S. related organizations that tried to recover with no avail the shipwreck. Um, so it's, it's interesting that they haven't at this point shown an interest, but maybe that's what it takes. Maybe it just takes uh, showing them a little something and then they jump in. Who knows? <laughs> John, I think uh, that, I think that um, one of the things which may uh, possibly perturb them is that they have spent millions, if not <laughs> tens of millions, and I have heard it said they've spent hundreds of millions looking for this shipwreck. Wow! And uh, a, a bunch of landlubbers from Harrogate have found it, and uh, they're they're not well pleased. <laughs> John, we've been out to the site and dive there on numerous occasions. And uh, like you said earlier, every time we've gone, we've brought up more materials. And one of the things that strikes me as very interesting is that the materials that we have recovered uh, are those of what you would expect from, like, from a burnt shipwreck, a highly damaged shipwreck. But one of the, other than finding burned signs of, of fire, we're also finding a tremendous amount of brass, metal fixtures, rivets, bolts, 
indications that they also came from a galleon that matches uh, the correct epoch. As you were saying that, um, there was one of the first pieces of wood that we found, um, which has got cuprius um, rivets in it. Um, I understand that cuprius is the word that describes things <laughs> that may be made of copper, brass. And, is that, is that and, correct? Now, you're, uh, you're actually fiddling with one of them. So um, I don't know. <laughs> That's <if> right. That. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's so. hard. It's hard to deny that. There's one point where, uh, in this in this video, where uh, there's Claudia. She joined my girlfriend. Joined us on a on one of the trips. Uh, one of the times, of course, for those people who don't know this part of of Yorkshire, this part of England, it is really very pretty. It's a very pretty part of of the country, uh, and um, uh, like we were saying before. Uh, these the remains of what have been uh, found here have all been examined in detail at your house and stored in perfect conditions underwater obviously uh, but there's a part when you're examining uh, on your lawn the um, the some of the remains where Tim points out that this is a brass fixture and so it must be a decorative element that came from inside of the boat so that's another thing that indicates that this was uh, a vessel of substantial size. Correct. Correct. Well, well, well. What's the What's the plan? When uh, When do we reckon? How many times have we gone out so far? Uh, we've done twenty two expeditions. Um, some of those times we've done more than one dive, so uh, we've probably done thirty plus dives. Um, and we've got more than 30 artifacts out of the water. And as Bruce said, we've probably seen another 50 to 100 in the water, some of them too large to bring out by hand. Mm. And uh, because we're always compliant, we, we don't use lifting gear or anything like that. Um, right. And that means that we can't get it out, uh, but nor can anybody else. Our, right. One of our biggest worries is that uh, certainly from the very first time we went down there, we meet dog walkers who mm. say something like, oh, it's unusual to see anybody else down here. I come here mm. every weekend to see if I can find some uh, wood washed up. Sometimes it's a bit burnt and we take it home and put it on oh, the barbecue. No. Oh, no. So, oh, no. So uh, the, the inhabitants of the East Coast are gradually burning the wreck oh, on their weekend no. barbecues travesty yeah. a total travesty and it is one of the the biggest difficulties uh, of the site uh, i've had the pleasure of diving all over the world in different sites uh, or shipwrecks that are somewhat relatively intact this one is not relatively intact it really is the cadaver of a tremendously damaged vessel uh, but it would be even worse to see its remaining fate be burned away on people's barbecues, quite frankly. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the problem with the Bonham Richard is it's literally a debris. It's a debris wreck, what we would describe as, just, yeah. you know, it's been it's been pulverized uh, during the course of not only the battle itself, uh, but also over time. And also um, it's suffered the consequences of the currents and and behaviors natural sea Correct. currents and tides and everything else on that coast so it's a very unforgiving area so when 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 you look at the scans um you'll see uh, they'll pop up now and again on the video but when when you look at the scans they look rather sort of blended uh, a shape forming a shape there you can see there it forms yeah, yeah. a shape rather than a structured hardline drawing illustration of a shipwreck it's a it's an implied uh, form it is and the reason the reason for that is is because it's a it's just made up of the component parts rather than the structural integrity Correct. of a, 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 a hull of a ship and that's what's made it really difficult for, for when John and yourself have gone into the water you know what is it you're going to see and what is it that you're going to be able to recover it's not like Correct. going and seeing a whole wreck, uh, you know, of the Mary Rose or something. It's literally uh, it's damaged to the to the extent that we're looking at a, you know, a, a, a heap of component parts. And when you see the the timbers that have come out, 
it rather does look like these are the pieces that you would construct the ship from correct rather than this is the ship that's constructed from pieces so correct, um, yeah. we're already at a disadvantage uh, in that regard but that doesn't doesn't change very much i mean the um the timbers that are that are laid out on the lawn there when you see uh, they they are also um some of them mirror one another so they, they look exactly the same but one's charred and one's not so charred mm. um there's some very very large pieces as well which uh, and very some very small so it it really is a mishmash of, of components it, it really well. is yeah it's a it's an extraordinary thing when you see it because being in the water it looks like what you would expect that ruin to look like in the sense that it looks like a you know imagine the the ribs of the ship of the lower hull of the ship uh is all that is left and in that hand in that rigid structure it's been uh it's been capturing all of these boulders and fragments of stone on top so like you said the scan still has the general size and dimensions of a galleon but it's all over the place because of its state and how it was uh, um i've got a quick question we've got obviously uh tim yarrow and rich keys and our dive uh, team have been tremendously helpful because it's a diff it's a difficult place to dive um so it's it's maybe one of the things that is perhaps kept other than people wanting to barbecue pieces of it <laughs> uh that's kept uh the what remains of it at least parts of it there um we have some colleagues and extended friends who are like uh, melvin dickinson who had contacted tim uh, timothy acres uh years ago about having found potentially something on the beach that he believed belonged to it what was that all about it was a a, a piece of a pump or something it yeah it was suggested that it was one of the or part of one of the water pumps um it appears to be made out of elm um which is a likely timber that would have been used because t elm is not subject to deterioration as a result of being in the sea um and he still has that um and very happy for us to make use of the information around that um, terrific it's just more evidence, isn't it, that it goes to show yeah. that this isn't just any shipwreck. This is very much uh, what seems to be the, the, the Bonhammer Shard. And if it's not the Bonhammer Shard, well, it sure looks like it. Mm -hmm. It sure looks like it. The other thing is as well, go, what John was saying about dog walkers collecting pieces over, over the years, the chances are that there will be other elements of the wreck that will have been taken home by people that they may not even be aware that what they have of course um, and there's a yeah. within the community we know that there are there's a, a collection of uh, of artifacts that have been secreted away um over the years and of course if all of those were uh, able to be recovered collectively right. that would that would build a build an even more compelling picture um, going back to the um, the, the scope of uh, engagement in trying to find the wreck site from 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 America and other agencies, I think at the, over 30 years, a period of 30 years, um, there's been 13 expeditions. No kidding. Um, and some of them have been collaborative with French as well as American because the French mm. had a vested interest in the Bonham Richard having gifted it be the original ship was a an, an east indiaman called Le Duc de Ras. Wow. and um that over those 30 years they've reputedly and they've reported this themselves uh with their own uh, records uh, 260 million dollars of of expenditure and huh. effectively found absolutely nothing good lord so we're not really <laughs> we're not trying to um uh, you know, uh, you know, it's a top Trump situation. What we're saying is that we have a body of evidence. Uh, our research has been pretty robust, yeah. and what we've done is is all been at our own expense. We haven't had any funding from any other external part party, yeah, yeah. nor have we had scope of resources that service vessels and you sure. know research and scientists and all of the other marine uh, sure. technological capability. All right, so we are back. We just took a quick pause, and uh, John, I could see you put a nice red jacket on. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Where is it called over there in, in, in Harrogate? We're in North Yorkshire. North Yorkshire. So uh, we were talking about some of the recovered artifacts in the water, and Bruce was obviously talking about uh, the the um, administrative side of recovering anything. We've always got to be very careful. And Bruce, uh, we've got a bunch of the retrieved artifacts uh under observation tell us a little bit about those about the brass pins that we've found and pulled up so um on screen now there is one of the first bits of wood that we pulled up complete with a rivet um and uh that's been very significant uh we have other uh, brass pins and things but that was uh one of our first which was very exciting it, and brass pins, there's one part where uh, Tim is in the garden observing some of these artifacts, and he makes a comment about a brass pin. If it was brass, it would have had to come from a decorative ornamental piece that would have been on the inside of a boat. And that that's a relatively large uh, brass bolt right there, which would indicate it was from a large boat, not a small vessel. So uh, the, the, the recovered items, the brass bits... All of these things are indicative that they came from the correct vessel. I, I don't see it coming from any any other vessel. Uh, no, but certainly, it's, it, without doubt, it's a wooden vessel. It's a wooden vessel of that period. Um, it, the brass pins and the timber that we've seen so far um, doesn't necessarily point to it being... Uh, a French West Indiaman, but uh, when you then combine that information with the fact that nearly all of the wood is burnt, the only burnt ship that we know of in the East Coast is the Bonhomme Richard. Um, so we're putting two and two together and coming up with something a little bit more than four, but it doesn't mean to say that it would be less than four. Sure, sure, um, sure. No. There, uh, there were a couple artifacts that obviously it, this is a dumping ground for any material that happens to float in over the over the centuries and decades. But uh, there were a few other artifacts that we first identified. That thought, like there was a bottle that was jammed in between two stones, but then that turned out to be something more recent. I think. Um, uh, no, we we didn't confirm it was more recent. What oh, really? we did manage to not confirm that it was from that period. Um, we will see that again shortly, and if it comes up on screen, I'll I'll say, oh, there it is. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's it's a black bottle jammed between a, a couple of rocks. That is correct. Um, yeah. And and at the time, um, I can't remember if it was you or it was Chris. Me. It was me. I couldn't get it out. Head up and said, "We found a bottle." Yeah, and that's I think right. I said, Something like um, uh, leave the bottle. We want a cannon. That's right. Yes, that's right. That is right. And it's funny because I couldn't get that bottle anyway. It was so jammed between these giant boulders. It was properly fixed into. I wasn't able to get that out. Uh, but at least we got it on film. And when in following trips we went back, I wasn't able to find it. I wasn't able to find it again. I would remember that day though because you're like, no, no, leave the bottle. Um, one thing about and I, said it, I said it exactly yeah. like that. No, no, please just leave it. Didn't yes, I? Yes, did. I mean, that, that's the, that's the reason why. Um, I mean, once we <laughs> once we'd made contact with the receiver of wreck and we got on top of all of the legislative requirements, etc., we can't take any machinery to to make to a recovery. So anything that we can take and take out by hand, and that's why things have been left in the water. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then hopefully we know that the, the, the conditions really sort of uncover something new every time. And as you can see on screen now, I mean, there's two pieces of timber, ship's timber. One's burnt, one's not burnt. And you can see the, the extent of the actual engineering yeah. involved in constructing these elements. Um, Look at that. And, not, you know, that's, they're, they're, la they're large, but... Um, yeah. You, you, you can't you can't use machinery all of that was taken out of the water by hand, by hand and the yeah. conditions will uncover more and more artifacts over time because um, they're, they're either submerged or under a rock so each time that we have gone back we have been able to bring something else out because yeah. um you know the the, the water in the seabed's been disturbed enough 
for us to be able to take take it out of the water by hand. There's that great shot of Tim right there. He was he was obsessed with with the Bonham Richard. It was for him, uh, I think, a. Uh, Partially because it's right next to you. To, it's not far from Harrogate, so it's in your waters, really, isn't it? Um, and so many of the discoveries that uh, that Merlin Barrows have made, that we've made as a team, have been all over the world, and yet that one is right in your own backyard, which I think maybe that made it to him a little bit of a, a, a hobby project. But it's a massive discovery, a very important discovery, something I'm super proud to be part of. I love every single project that we've had a chance to work on but this one this one is tremendously exciting i think because over the last seven eight years we've had the chance to amass enough material uh, to prove that it is what it is um one step shy of pulling a cannon out well the problem is is that everybody's got their own view um, and but the, the thing the thing that w that we we way 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 ahead of any other party is that not only have we got the scan, we've got the site, we've got the proportions, we've got a body of evidence that's both recovered and uh, catalogued on film, correct, um, yeah. or or or, or, or photo photographed, um, and that's repeatedly been the case over. Um, I'm just looking at the timeline now since 2015 to current day. So you're talking eight years of, of, yeah. of, uh, of, of work. Yeah. Um, and it's created a significant body of evidence. It's supported by um, complete independent documentation from records, witnesses, uh, accounts. Captain, the captain's logs are the most fundamental uh, um, insight into what went on and they're irrefutable in their own way because they were literally the the order of the day sure um, and and they were taken as gospel if a captain committed ink to the paper in his log um, it was considered to be you know um, the, a body of evidence that could be called upon at any time by very many people sure um, Sure. No, I think I think we're like you said earlier. The the party that's conducted the most in depth, uh, extensive research on this subject period anywhere in the world ever. Yeah, we can't we can't underestimate how much work's gone into it. Um, yeah. One of the things that we hope we'll hopefully do over the over the series of these uh, these short uh, pieces is that podcasts is that. You know, we'll start to open up, you know, exactly what work has gone on. And, um, you know, and, and it's an, and it's quite uh, quite reasonable to expect, you know, a significant amount of scrutiny and questioning going on with regard to that. Sure. Um, and we're very we're very open to it. You know, we've got we've got we've got a pretty transparent and uh, open approach to it. You know, least of all the number of um the times that we've actually um, held meetings, talks, presentations to the community, the great and the good. Sure. Uh, both people that are either um, agree with our work or those that are diametrically opposed to our, um, our our suppositions. It doesn't really matter because this is the way that this is where the battle took place, and um, that there, there is no debate about that. Um, and uh, the body of evidence that we're presenting is very compelling. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. And uh, I think with the world being able to see and understand through the films that we're producing and through the, the documentation that we've done throughout the last eight years is able to see uh, all of this work. It's hard to refute, I think, uh, uh, because we're narrowing down on certainly the ruins of a ship obviously, that seems to have undergone the same fate that the Bonham Richard underwent. So if it's in the same place, it's, I have no question about it. I, I'm certain that's what it is. And uh, I, I want to thank you guys for being the awesome team that you are. And uh, I think next we're going to try to get Tim Yarrow, maybe Rich Keys, and possibly Melvin Dickinson to patch in and uh, chat a little bit with us as well about uh, about what they've seen 
you know working with us yeah. on this over the last uh, over the last um, how long's it been? Eight years. Eight years. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, on that note, gentlemen, John, uh, Bruce, thank you so much for joining me and uh, on this uh, podcast today. Thank you to the audience. Uh, thank you, guys, and we'll catch up uh, very soon. All right. Great. Good to good to spend the time together. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, John. This time, bye. Cheers. Bye. 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 Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us on this short introductory podcast on the Bonham Richard. Make sure you join us again soon for more interviews and more insight on one of the most legendary maritime discoveries of all time. Take care and see you soon.